In this video, we are going to use new AI workflow builder in NA10 to do the heavy lifting for us. So we are going to burn some tokens and smash the create workflow button. I've prepared some challenges for this new feature and yeah, let's start with the very first one. Uh, in the first challenge, uh, we want to uh, make a call to the external uh, documentation to create an HTTP request uh, to this API endpoint. Um, I'm going to click create uh, workflow. And yeah, to be honest, I haven't used this feature before. So whatever I do here, I'm doing for the very first time. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure uh, whether this builder has browser built in. So I'm not sure it's able to access this documentation to retrieve the data. Let's see uh, what it comes up with. As far as I can see, uh, we already have the workflow uh, ready. But yeah, what I see here, it's basically doing the HTTP request to uh, retrieve the documentation. So when I run this workflow, I suppose I should have yeah, the uh, the data from uh, from this page yeah extracted. But what we actually want to do uh, is what we we want to do the HTTP request to uh, to this endpoint, right? So normally I would do just a copy of CURL and uh, and that's it. Uh, but yeah, in this case, uh, it's not going to work. So, uh, but what I can do is basically I can ask uh, this builder to use this data uh, to do the API uh, HTTP request. So uh, I'm going to uh, write the prompt right now and see you in a second. All right. So uh, what I added here is basically I asked the builder to use the uh, data from the last node. So the retrieve documentation to do the HTTP request. Uh, I'm going to yeah, execute this. Uh, if this prompt is not good in your opinion, I'm very sorry. I'm not prompt engineer at all. Uh, so yeah, let's see what it comes up with. Basically, in the meantime, uh, I can uh, tell you a bit about this feature. So first of all, uh, if you are if, if you don't have this on your N8 instance, uh, don't worry, it's currently in limited beta. So uh, it should roll out uh, very soon uh, to more and more users. And uh, yeah, as far as I know, uh, it currently uh, will be available only on cloud. But um, goal for N8 team is to bring this also to self-hosted so you most probably will be able to bring your own api keys and yeah use it on your own machine all right uh we have this uh, generation ready uh what we have here basically is the code node with the to parse the documentation we have a bunch of regular expressions and yeah we have example api requests so yeah we have method url and so on to be honest, I'm vibe coding it, so uh, I'm going to just press uh, execute workflow and yeah, see what happens. So yeah, basically, uh, as I expected, we have uh, some error here. To be honest, this um, HTTP request node looks a bit odd, uh, as far as I can see. So uh, yeah, in this very case, uh, sadly, we are not uh, able to, uh, to do the request. So basically, the goal of this very first uh, challenge was to try to be uh, as fresh into N8 as possible. So I see this cool API. I don't see a native node in N8 and I want to do the HTTP request. So what I do basically is I enter the prompt and, and I want N8 to build this uh, for me. In this case, uh, it didn't work, uh, but don't worry. We have uh, three challenges left. So let's dive into them. So each challenge is going to be rated uh, with the stars, uh, max of three stars per, per challenge. And yeah, for the challenge one, suddenly I need to give one star because yeah, it didn't pass the test. Basically, uh, for the challenge two, uh, we want to create uh, an agent that uh, goes through the page and retrieves contact data. So I give a um, URL of some company, for example, and yeah, it autonomously should uh, basically retrieve the uh, contact um, data from uh, from from this page, right? So I've created also a very simple prompt, and yeah, since I know that it's not able to uh, perform browser actions, uh, I will uh, simply use HTTP request uh, as a node to basically um, access that page data. So the very simplified version here. Uh, I'm going to click create workflow. And yeah, basically, eventually, it should look more or less like this. Uh, the thing is, I'm using here the uh, Workflows API. In this case, it's going to be, a, it should be actually a just HTTP request tool that access the, accesses the page and yeah, retrieves, retrieves the data. So let's see what our uh, builder comes up with. Let's give a, a second. I will be right back. Okay, so uh, we have our workflow ready here. Uh, basically, what I did right now is I've only uh, set up the credentials for uh, OpenAI. 
And yeah, as we can see, we have here GPT-4 Omini as a um, model chosen by, by the builder and sampling temperature of 0 0.1, which is like super low. And yeah, we have here uh, yeah, from AI URL, um, HTTP request uh, with the one parameter, which um, looks good. And we have also structured um, JSON output parser so uh, to retrieve the email address or or whatever, right? So yeah, we can give it right now. Um, yeah, we have also company URL, so we can enter here, for example, workflows.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's see uh, how it performs. So basically it's, um, yeah, visiting right now. Let's have a look. We have one error at the moment. Let's give it a second. All right, we have an output and in the output, we have basically all right, it's it's actually retrieved the data. Uh, so we have our social media, uh, we have the Twitter, uh, we have the email address, which uh, actually worked good despite this uh, one uh, one error here. Right, so we can also have a look in the uh, in the executions, and yeah, actually it visited like several uh, pages which were predefined here uh, in this in this set node, right? Uh, but yeah, the very first uh, call to the workflows was uh, like completely correct in this case. So yeah, it actually passed the test in my opinion, uh, despite the fact it's very, it's very deterministic in this in this case. Probably when I asked the builder uh, several times to uh, yeah recreate this workflow a bit, it would uh, do the job. Uh, so yeah, I think it's uh, it did uh, it did a good job. So back to the challenges list. I'm leaving for the challenge to three stars because despite these small errors, uh, it did actually quite a good job. Uh, even for the entry level user, it will be like a very good starting point to create a uh, own workflow and yeah, tweak it a bit. So uh, I will I will leave uh, three stars uh, in this case. So for the challenge three, uh, we want to actually extract the very first table from the page and turn it into a structured JSON. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, as a test page this specific um, page from uh, N810 documentation. And what we want, what we actually want to do is um, take this data and turn it into into JSON. So basically, we need to do the HTTP request, and uh, most probably some code node should be involved to. Uh, yeah, parse this data and uh, return a simple a simple JSON. So I'm going to uh, simply copy this prompt and yeah, let's put it into our uh, AI workflow builder and let's give it a few seconds uh, to do the job. So we have our workflow ready. Uh, on the very first look, it's um, looking actually quite good. Uh, it's what I expected. Uh, so let's have a um, more deep uh, dive into this. So in the very first uh, node, we have a target URL, uh, which is the example uh, page uh, with, with the table. I'm going to replace it with the uh, documentation page from, uh, from NA10. Uh, then we want to fetch uh, the data, so it also looks good in this case. Uh, we have the extract uh, table data, so we have the output with the key table, and we want to yeah, extract HTML from uh, from the table. It also looks good. Uh, it also automatically added to trim values and cleanup um, text, which is good in this case. And eventually we have some um, JavaScript to turn it uh, into, into JSON, right? So uh, yeah, let's have a look whether uh, it actually works properly. And yeah, it's, yeah, we have nothing in the output, right? So for some reason, it's, uh, it doesn't work in this case. And uh, I don't know why I'm not going to debug this uh, on the spot, uh, but yeah, let's try it once again, whether, whether it fetches content, as we can see, it fetches content correctly. Uh, we have the table here also good so the most probably we have an issue with uh with this uh with this uh, javascript uh code uh, at the end uh just to give you a reference uh this is actually the workflow that i've created before i've uh, started to generate this with the uh, ai builder and as you can see it looks uh, quite similar uh, we have the HTTP request uh, node uh, to yeah, fetch the data from the documentation, right? Uh, I have also the 
HTML extract a node uh, to <laughs> even the keys is a key is the same and yeah CSS selector I also uh, check to clean up uh, the text so it also uh, yeah retrieves the the same table so it also looks good uh, the whole thing is with um, this JavaScript that I've created here it actually should yeah return the correct output and I've also have this like split out records to basically put it into uh, separate items, right? So uh, as you can see, both uh, me as a developer and uh, AI Builder uh, came up with the very similar uh, workflow uh, with a bit changed uh, um, logic, but yeah, overall it looks good. So uh, despite the fact that it uh, doesn't, wor doesn't work, I think I can leave like two stars here. And for the last challenge, I want to create a simple Telegram bot, which basically will consist of three agents. Uh, each will be speaking in uh, other language. So uh, it will be English, Polish, and German. And I want to simply uh, use the commands to switch between those three agents, for example, to learn the languages, right? And I want also want to use the um, native data tables feature uh, in NA10 to store the uh, recent preferences of the user. Uh, so uh, whenever I interact with the workflow, uh, it will automatically switch to the last used uh, language. By the way, if you haven't watched the video about data tables, uh, I highly recommend you to do so. It's on my channel. Uh, you can find it. Uh, let's dive into uh, creating the workflow. So I will burn some more tokens here. Okay, so it took some time for the AI builder to create this workflow. It took around uh, two minutes or so. So the very first thing that I uh, don't see here is any, um, there's no data tables uh, node. Uh, so uh, I think this is a bit problematic because I'm not sure how this workflow is gonna know uh, what is the last uh, user uh, preferences uh, when it comes to the language uh, that uh, wants to speak. Uh, but yeah, let's have a look from the beginning. We have the Telegram trigger, right? Uh, we have the workflow configuration, which I'm not sure is here like a really necessary. And we have here also the switch node, so we can switch between English, Polish, and German. We have also the fallback output. And uh, I've I've already um, split it out a bit because it was a bit messy. Uh, but what we have here basically is uh, we have three agents. Each of them has separate model and memory. Yeah, we have also Telegram response tool, uh, which I'm not sure is like a correct way uh, to, to do so. I think the best way would be actually to create like a, a separate node uh, connected to the agent basically that handles sending the response message. And I'm not really sure why we have here the uh, code node uh, tool connected. It's supposed to track preferred uh, language uh, for, for the user, but I'm not sure how it persists between the workflow runs, right? And uh, another thing that I've noticed is basically for each agent here, for example, we have the prompt correctly, right? Uh, but when it comes to the this node, uh, we have the connected to chat trigger node and we don't have chat trigger here. Uh, so it's not going to work definitely in this case. Uh, we have here also uh, yeah, session ID. Since we don't have uh, any chat trigger, we also don't have like a specified uh, session ID up front. So when it comes to the Telegram trigger, we can, for example, take the uh, user ID to uh, have a persisted uh, ID between uh, the workflow runs, right? So in this case, this workflow is definitely not going to work uh, in, in this form. And uh, yeah. Sadly, it's just one star in this case, right? And to wrap it up, uh, we had four challenges. Two of them failed. Um, one of them was uh, like a pretty good uh, and one was actually the really good result. So um, when it comes to my my op opinion about this uh, AI workflow builder, uh, whether it's hyped or helpful, I definitely think uh, it's a helpful tool. And um, yeah, at the current stage, I think it can be like a really good starting point for people that are starting with NA10 and um, don't know exactly what's possible with this tool, uh, how to approach the specific problem or so. Uh, but when it comes to the building uh, advanced stuff, uh, it definitely uh, requires uh, some more work. Uh, as far as I know, uh, NA10 team has a really great plans when it comes to the 
uh, AI workflow builder. And I wish all the best because um, with more advanced features and workflow building, uh, it will definitely speed up time for automating processes. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and to my newsletter link, like always in the description and see you soon. Cheers.